When we heat the surface of the ocean, we create a layer of hot water at the top. And that layer of hot water at the top is sitting on a colder layer at the bottom. A lake is very similar to that. That region, that interface between the hot layer and the cold layer is called a thermocline because in that region we have a rapid change in temperature, maybe one to several degrees from the warmer water to the colder water. So a thermocline, this area of rapid change in temperature, actually just represents an interface, the boundary between two water parcels with different temperatures. Okay. In the upper ocean, that layer above the thermocline is called the surface mix layer. And it's called the surface mix layer because it takes on its own independent properties. That surface mix layer tends to be mixed up because of winds blowing. It tends to have very similar properties from the surface down to the thermocline. It's called mixed because it's mixed up and it exhibits very specific chemical, biological, and physical properties versus the water below it. So we want to really, I want to introduce here two terms, the thermocline, this boundary between two layers, and the surface mix layer, the upper part of the ocean above the surface mix layer. And another important aspect of this is that that surface mix layer is cut off, not completely cut off, but exchanges between that surface layer and the water below it are very minimal. So there's very little that's exchanged across that thermocline. So in terms of physical, chemical, and biological properties, the surface layer is going to be very distinct from the layer beneath it. The thermocline begins to develop as the ocean gains heat. When does the ocean gain heat? If we think about, our, again, our own experiences, when does it begin to warm up during the seasonal cycle? During the springtime. So as sun angles rising, as days are getting longer, as the intensity of solar radiation per unit area is becoming more intense, the surface of the ocean begins to warm up and a thermocline forms. And that thermocline is called the seasonal thermocline. That absorption uh, of that heat may be slowed down if we have winds or any other processes that distribute that heat deeper, but ultimately that thermocline develops and it's the rate of heating and mixing that determines how quickly and how strong or what the gradient of temperature is across that thermocline. The very top of the thermocline defines the depth of the surface mix layer called the mix layer depth. So from the surface to the thermocline, and again, the warm water, the surface mix layer, sitting on top of colder water, here's the thermocline. This depth is called the mix layer depth, okay? And as we go from winter time, where we have completely mixed water column, and it begins to warm up, we begin to form a thermocline that actually gets shallower and shallower and as we'll see the mixed layer depth gets shallower and shallower because we're heating it up and creating really a series of thermoclines. Okay, so that's where we're going with this part of our discussion and figure 724 exemplifies this process. As we go from winter to summer we're adding heat to the surface waters and we have a thermocline that's going from deep in the water column to very shallow in the water column. This process of creating a shallower thermocline and really in a sense creating layers of water because we know that hotter water stays on top of the colder water so we're getting layers and layers of water, layers of hot water as the heat continues to rise as we continue to heat those surface waters. That process is called stratification we're creating strata. In an opposite way, as it cools down, so as we go from August to October, as we're cooling water, the water is going to sink. It's going to reach its neutral buoyancy layer. Here it's reached its neutral buoyancy layer between 60 and 70 meters. 
and then as we go to December because it's sinking and because we're only showing the upper 100 meters here the water completely mixes again so that process where we're breaking down these water layers is called destratification and destratification generally happens between September and I'll say January here or September and December depending on exactly where you are so we create layers of water based on their density these strata of layers we create a thermocline that's called stratification we break that down by cooling surface waters creating more dense water negatively buoyant it sinks it mixes the water column up it makes a deeper thermocline that's destratification we're taking the layers away so we have no layers at all in December because that cold water cold dense water is sinking and creating this mixing that mixes up the entire water column now again I know this might be a little bit conceptually mind-boggling in a sense but if you sit down carefully read the portions of the text study the figures listen again to this lecture think again about the relationship between seawater density and temperature and salinity think again about the processes that change the density of seawater so that figure that shows the addition of fresh water or evaporation or the formation of ice or the melting of ice or the influence of rivers or any of those processes that change the density of the ocean and if you think about the seasonal cycle of the sun which is changing the heating of the ocean and thinking about heating and cooling of the ocean you'll start to have your own understanding of how the physics of the ocean how the physical structure of the ocean is produced and think back again to that lake that you swam in in the summer if you were to go to that lake in the winter it would be cold from top to bottom in the summer it's warm at the top and cold at the bottom so between those two states that cold lake with the same temperature all the way from the surface to the bottom in the winter to the warm lake at the surface and cold at the bottom in the summer it's the changing between those two states that's represented here from December the wintertime lake to August the summertime lake and the creating of layers in between that and again if you have some trouble understanding that feel free to email me again this is a really important concept because if you can understand this figure if it makes sense to you it opens up a whole world of oceanography to you okay we've already explained stratification and destratification so feel free to read this slide and understand it a little bit better and also remember that these processes can change so if we have a string of cloudy days it might weaken the stratification um, but in general we're talking about the general trends of the season from winter time to summer time and I can't emphasize again stratification of the water column is one of the most important physical events in temperate and polar oceans and really it applies to tropical oceans as well it's this stratification of the water that drives biological productivity from phytoplankton the photosynthetic microbes that depend on light and biologically important nutrients as we explained in chapter uh, 6 to whales the things that we love to watch so please I encourage you study those figures and study this section we're going to be talking about this section through really the end of the semester from now on 